On this day, I am thankful for two things. Red Bull, because I'm fucking tired. Oh, my back. And the previous owner leaving one of these guys in the trunk. Because today, we will be shortening the wire system. So I'm literally going to go and start at the computer. This is the ECM engine control module. Excuse my filthy nails. I mean, ugh, the AC, ugh, filthy. Anyway, I'm going to start at the ECM and I'm going to find the blue and red followed by the white and red followed by the violet so that I know I'm on the right end of the ECM because the other end doesn't have those wires in that order. And then I'm going to start one wire at a time and go, well, that comes from the fuse block and provides power through the room fuse 10 amp to the actual ECM. So I'm going to leave that wire alone. Then we go white and red and we follow that over and that goes to the fuel injector. So don't mess with that. Violet. Oh, it's number one. You go to page two. There's violet. We follow it down just like a treasure map. So exciting. Where's it going to lead? Oh my. Oh. All right. That comes from the stop signal fuse 10 amp main fuse block. So that's obviously providing power to the ECM as well. Yellow and black goes down here. That's a junction where it has a dot like that. Otherwise they do not connect. That goes to the data link connector. So I know where that's gonna go. That's gonna go to the dash panel for the check engine light. Black and black, hmm, duh. That's a ground symbol. All right, yellow, that goes to injectors. Yellow and black, all right. Eventually you're gonna come to a wire that's like refrigerant pressure switch. Okay, that's gonna go to the air conditioner. Remember, we deleted the AC, so that wire can literally be removed from the entire circuit. I normally go out about three inches and cut it, then remove the rest of the wire. If I do decide I ever need that wire again, it's right there. I don't yank it right out of the ECM because later on you may want to use the circuit for something like the heater control unit or the AC relay, coolant fan relay. You can use those to activate certain things at certain parameters. If you know what the parameters are for these circuits to come alive through the stock system computer, then you can say, for example, if this condenser fan relay only comes on when you turn the AC on on the dash and it sees a certain refrigerant pressure value. So you can set this to that value at all times and then have this on a toggle so that when you hit that button it turns on a relay to do something for you. Say a uh, water pump for uh, drink in your helmet through a straw like a water straw for long distance tracks. You know you can have on a uh, water injection for your intercooler that only comes on at certain temperatures etc. So I like to leave those about two or three inches of wire and cut them and then strip the rest of the wire out of the wire harness and that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna start little by little going down this list right over here at the ECM. Once all those wires are cut and ready to remove then I'll start slowly working my way up here getting out all the airbag components, cruise control, radio, heating, air conditioning, all of that stuff and then I'll start prepping the wiring for the ignition and blinkers and all that stuff to be on switches on the center console. I also need to pull the steering wheel and airbag because I did find a race hub mini adapter for the steering wheel and a quick release with side paddles so even if you have gloves on and I sorted out the coil wire for the buttons on the steering wheel. Eight wire CB cable. Who knew? Anyway. And then I'm going to use a microphone plug with a female in the dash receiver for that plug. So it just plugs in like a microphone, unplugs, boom. So for now, I need to start at the computer. I want to disconnect all of this, get it dismounted so it's easier to fumble with. It's going to be remounted up here anyway, so it's out of the rain, out of any splashing. Because again, this will be street legal. So if it does happen to rain or kick up any water, I do not want the computer getting wet. So a lot of this wire is going to get removed just on length alone. 
but half of it will get pulled out just because it's not going to be used. So I'm going to get this cleaned up enough to work in here and then I'm going to remove that. All right, I figured out what this guy is. That is for the ABS. So if you have one of those next to your computer, you probably have one of those as well for ABS. Now, for the computer, I learned if you have two connectors, you have OBD1. If you have three connectors, you have OBD2. So don't argue in the comments over mid-95 or mid 90s it doesn't matter look behind your seat or under there if it's under there you have obd1 i'm sorry um, if it's back here and you have two connectors it's obd1 three connectors it's obd2 now as i start looking into this blue and red white and red doodly do and i'm looking here at these guys and then the colors start jumping around and changing and i don't know i so I found online this guy, which shows me 1A, 1B, and if you don't know, the one is, one is the smaller connector, two is the bigger connector. And then it goes A, B, C, D, E, all the way down. And then two is A, B, C, all the way down. So, and they go like that. They kind of fit together. Now, with this, which is way more detailed than that, and there's even some wires that are kind of missing, like the white and green. I didn't know what it went to. Oh, it goes to the data link. I would have just yanked it out. So this is probably a 94, I don't know. Anyway, so what I'm going to do now is use this guy to go into here and start yanking out wires. Once I have them all yanked out the way I want it, I'll shorten that actual wire harness to where the computer will be right there. So, now I get to chopping. Another good idea is Dollar Tree, these little paper labels. I would consider these temporary AF, but write what your wire is on them if you're confused or before you disconnect something, if you're going to be confused about where to connect it back up, put a label on it write it on there with a marker. They have these in plastic that are more of a semi-permanent, but I just use these until I get everything connected the way I want it, and then you can tear these off and go about your business. All right, well that diagram was a big help. Pretty much have everything done the way I want. I know it doesn't look like I'd made a lot of progress, but I did. This is gonna be a, a two-part deal in one video for sure, because I need to figure out what I'm gonna keep and what's gonna go. I've already removed a lot of wiring and tape and garbage. So tomorrow I will finalize a lot of this wiring. Tail lights, headlights, blinkers, and then I'll shorten those harnesses or prep them at least for shortening so that I can hang the ECM and the ABS module up there on the firewall. Still got to clean these pillars up, finish out the front wiring. Yeah, a lot of work, a lot of work still to do. So the plan here for easier movement of the cars in and out and because the door's over on this side, I want to move the buggy over here. So I think with it being as light as it is, and that is how you move a dune buggy. Now I can clean all this shit up. Ugh. Fucking tape. Ooh. All right, so the season doesn't start until February, so I've got plenty of time to finish this up. This is gonna go on the back burner for a second. Next up is notching the frame on the Bel Air. I've got the Ford nine inch, it's gotta go in, then I need to four link it, prep it for airbags. So this guy is gonna be stagnant for a bit. I'm gonna kind of work on it little by little as I get parts in the mail, things like that, but for the most part, it's gonna chill. This will be my winter project when I have nothing else to do. So that's gonna do it for this video. Like if you like, subscribe if you wanna see more. And as always, guys, keep on chopping.